Hello and welcome to This Week in Gwent. We have not one, but two guests. Two guests. How are you guys, how are you guys doing? Doing good. well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Really excited to have you guys here. I know you're probably also going to have more guests. We'll see how that goes. So <laughs> we might have other community members appearing randomly throughout this one. So it's going to be interesting for sure. <laughs> um, so Krosa, you're, you're the guest which was selected, but you're not uh, here by yourself. So, so a little bit of context for those watching, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe Jesse will just want to... Yeah, so. I'm Aslani J, I'm a streamer. Of course, you yeah. know her. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and also Donna, we are uh, engaged, we have been for a few months now. Awesome. Got, uh, to know each other through Gwend. Yeah? Berger, it's your fault, basically. <laughs> Perfect. I like, I, I can be blamed for stuff like that anytime, anytime. It's actually Gwend's skirmish fault. Yeah, like the whole, I, I guess CDPR as a whole, or like the, 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 the game and everything that came with it. And yeah, yeah. Uh, just is visiting me right now and the idea is that um, hopefully everything's going to work out we're going to go to south africa uh, first day of christmas and then stay there for a few weeks and get married so yeah. that is amazing all the best yeah. to you guys it's really incredible it's it's funny that you mentioned that you guys went through through gwent which is which is incredible mm -hmm. but uh you guys are currently yeah in two different parts of the world so so that's even that's even more crazy uh, mm -hmm. But I'm happy that yeah, you guys are, are powering through it, and especially in these crazy times that we have right now, it's I think it's adds a little bit more pressure and difficulty to the whole thing. But it's it's awesome to see you guys together, and that this whole thing is is evolving. So so kudos to you guys. Okay, uh, we'll get to those things most likely later on in the conversation. But first off, we'll start off with the standard um, twig stuff that we normally do. So we'll go through the red news, then the community news, and then the memes. And yeah, let's. I think we should go straight into it because I think like we're going to be talking for quite some time after after we get through all of these. So red news, uh, three items on the board. Black Friday is, is actually today, and uh, we have some special discounts for you. Um, check out the shoop shops. There's keg. There's other there's kegs. There's other stuff. Uh, and uh, most important thing, it lasts till um the end of the weekend so you don't have a lot of time so get on it uh if you're missing some stuff now's the time to get it and then also we're slowly starting to gear towards um world masters which is happening next weekend um we i can tell you that we recorded the draw show already we're currently editing that one so we already know the lineup but we'll be sharing it uh, if not today end of day then most likely on Monday, early Monday, so you guys can check it out. There also will be a divination challenge, and um, yeah, and you have the participants on the last graphic here. So Tailbot, Big Cuckoo Zina, um, Pieball, of course, Lortris, Cams, uh, Cams with a new photo, uh, looking um, less young, let's say, uh, so he's not the young wolf anymore. We have Akella, uh, Cybers, and of course, <clears throat> Shaggy uh, is back. Um, so it's gonna be. It's going to be a nice, nice, nice team. Um, what do you guys think about uh, esports uh, this this um, this year because of season three? Our guests. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, going to be another exciting Masters. Of course, the big highlight at the end uh, of each season. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's, it's a pretty diverse uh, cast once again of uh, players and um, with with uh, everything uh, that has uh, been leading up to the tournament, I think it's going to make for some juicy, uh, juicy matchups and juicy content. Oh yes, yes, there are leaks coming for sure uh, because it's end of the year. We like to keep some cool stuff uh, till the end. I can already tell you that we we recorded a pre-final segment that consists of a lot of guests that is I think fifty-seven minutes long. Um, so there's, yeah, there's going to be a lot of talking, a lot of stuff to show you guys. So I'm excited for it. And also throughout the event, we'll be leaking the, uh, 12 cards, which are going to be coming to the game in December. So there's, there's a lot of content, nice. uh, content heavy. Nice. I'm really happy about it. I'm currently working on the run of the show. So, um, looking at the, at the amount of content that we have, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good one. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, you guys should think about casting one day, maybe. <laughs> yeah, people something. keep asking us. This, but... Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. 
It makes yeah, sense. It makes sense. I, yeah, I mean, uh, it would probably be some fun banter between us over casting, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, I, mean, yeah, you, I mean, both of you stream, so I mean, it would be like a, like a natural thing for you. And you know the game super, super well, both of you. So, <laughs> I mean, it makes... Why? I mean, you yeah. have to you have yeah. to apply as soon as as soon as this is over. Yeah, uh, there there is an email. I'll send you the email. You should apply. Why not? <laughs> right, why right. not? I mean, we have we have next year and a lot of stuff happening. I mean, why not? If if you ask like that, how can we say no? <laughs> yeah, perfect. Cool. Yeah. Uh, moving on to community news. Uh, Crozier actually made it to this one with your beginner's <gasps> guide to, uh, to poison. So uh, good yeah, stuff. Check it there. out. Yeah, I really like those. I really like those. And for someone that is not too good at the game like I am or someone who is just coming in to the game, I think these are these are super beneficial. And uh, you're also playing in the tournament today, t tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm everywhere today. I don't yeah. know how that happened. <laughs> yeah, you're everywhere. Um, yeah, 10 p.m. CST, so in, in the time zone that we're currently in. Um, so yeah, you, you this is a nice skirmish, Guardians of the Broccolon. I really like the name. Um, so yeah, Lionheart, Zubidoo, Crozer, and Kung Fu Rabbit. Um, you guys are going to be fighting. And uh, Seely and uh, Crystal will be casting it if I, if I got that correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, uh, it's a cool series of tournaments. This is um, a Scoia'tael only tournament, so you can only bring Scoia. It should be right up your alley, version. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's that's how it made it to this episode because it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's my jam. Yeah. Yeah. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. We have a busy schedule today. Um, oh boy. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. And then we have a fan art of Gezris, um that I jumped like pretty much jumped on Reddit took it looks really amazing also square tail uh, connected so of course we need to have it and as you guys know we've been revealing parts of arts of cards which are going to be coming to the game in december um and yeah someone someone already solved the the you know the pieces of the puzzle so yeah. me and ryan uh, we got our work <laughs> done for us uh looks beautiful especially the archer i don't know what's up with his eyes but um yeah <laughs> You all of you almost got it. Um, last piece, of course, are the memes. Um, yeah, the Witcher stuff. Fight the wild hunt, the safe Siri. Like went, yeah, it's the, it's the brighter side of life. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, <laughs> my mom on her way home, chicken that is still in the freezer. Me, beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> I love, I love memes. Yeah, if, if if anyone has any memes, feel free to send them my way. Any any way you want, Twitter, uh, Discord. Whatever, whatever, whatever works. Totally, totally something that I that I enjoy. All right, guys. Uh, going, moving on to you. Uh, so we'll be. I'll be interviewing both of you in this case. Um, when which time for Miss Lady J? I remember that time. Did you join Gwent? And which meta was it? Oh, someone's coming. Um, <laughs> so, Grozer. Well, <laughs> you can open. Can you yeah. ask me the question quickly? Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> be right so back. <laughs> I joined when it came out in beta on console yeah, first you, month. you played on PS4 in the beginning, if I remember correctly, Yes, right? I did. Yeah. I did. So I, I didn't play competitive in the first month, but then I I started like playing much more in the second month of the ranked mm -hmm. ladder, cool. and then I got uh, my rank first, rank 21 on that one. Mm -hmm. And then I think... When Masters season came out, I think I only started halfway, and then I uh, came into some of the qualifiers. Yeah. Um, so so you joined super super early. When was the point where you thought, why not start streaming the game? Because I think you also started streaming from from your PS4, yeah, right? I, yeah. So I'm going into my fourth year. So I think in 2018 I started streaming. Mm -hmm. That's because I started watching lots of streamers also streaming the game and I thought it might be fun, but I also couldn't stream earlier than that because I didn't have um, the internet power to do it, I yeah, guess, yeah. the fiber. And on PlayStation, it's a bit difficult to stream through there with no overlays and stuff. It's true. It's true. Yeah, and then, then you moved on from from the PS4 to, to getting like a PC and streaming from PC, if, if I remember Yeah, correctly. one mm -hmm. month before Homecoming came out. Mm -hmm. So that one month where it was, where console didn't have Homecoming. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nice. Um, your favorite uh, faction or archetype was it in the beginning when you joined, or or is there like a favorite faction or it's archetype or been, meta? It's always been X Men in beta. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. my favorite, yeah, and then are, it was great swords. Those were good times. Um, mm -hmm. And which part or, or which moment when you started streaming did you think that? I should start doing this like full time. When was the time where you're like, let's let's do this full time? Because you're doing it for full time, mm -hmm. if I if I remember correctly. Yeah, I started at the end of. Um, so when I changed over to PC, that's also the time I, I uh, was released from my full time job. So uh -huh. I was like, okay, might as well do this while I'm looking for work. It took like three years to find work, so I just like <laughs> stuck with it. Mm -hmm. And then I was approached by my team currently, um, and they give like a salary to stream. So, so that was so it is like my full time job, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Amazing, amazing. And uh, throughout this thing, you also met Crozer, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, so you you guys met during the skirmish, and uh, then after that it was like, what was the, the next time that you guys, you know? decided that, you know, uh, maybe this will become, you know, a little bit more a thing, let's say. <laughs> I think it was a few months after that, mm -hmm. um, when TwitchCon came to Germany in 2019, I was, I was first like, okay, as friends, let's first go to TwitchCon, mm -hmm. let me visit you because it's in Germany, you might as well. But then I think just a month before that, then we were like, okay, maybe we should get together. Maybe we have feelings for each other. That's how it oh, works. That's really cool. That's really cool. Um, do you ever think about, like, since uh, you're visiting him right now, do you ever guys think about, like, I don't know, streaming together, you know, co-op stuff and, and stuff like that? Mm, we have done co-ops in the past, mm -hmm. and we've also made a deck guide together on a YouTube channel for uh, the council. Mm -hmm. And people have been asking us to do casting. I'm just not very confident in it <laughs> myself. I know he's confident in doing uh -huh. it, but I don't know about myself. I could try doing like not CDPR level of like masters or whatever or open, but we could try something together to see how well I do with that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's it's a matter of just you know making the decision and trying it. I mean, we have we have qualifiers throughout uh, throughout the year like happening, so that's a that's a good place to start. And from that point on, uh, getting into the events himself, I think is is also not you know it's like a natural progression. But I think the first thing is to actually try it and Hello. also do some community like you know um, related <laughs> uh, tournaments and stuff like that. Yeah, I I mean I've also made tournaments for Gwent before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you remember back I in the remember, day. I remember, yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. especially like uh, you were you were the person um, in, in, in South Africa to you know to to actually organize stuff and then get stuff uh, rolling and, and getting the community there kind of uh, you know going and playing the game and then getting tournaments set up. So so kudos to you because yeah it's 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 a lot to take on, and uh, it was it was interesting because a community that was that was new for us, like totally new. So yeah, you kind of brought our eyes towards that direction. So good and to see brought for that. the African leaderboard. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> True that. Uh, Crozer, we pretty much went through everything. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> <that's finished. laughs> um, yeah I, I guess just arrived. So yeah, to to. Uh, to, to, you must be watching now. Yeah. yeah. To move to you a little bit now. Um, mm -hmm. When did you join the game for the first time? I keep trying to remember when exactly that was, like what year, but I think it's about five years ago. It was closed beta still. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember Hensold was making cards uh, golden. Ooh. Uh, it was like a. <laughs> and, and it was, uh, I think Swim had just made a deck that completely broke the game of making infinite units spawn on the board. There was no row cap. I think Nilfgaard had just become a new faction. Uh, so all the way back. Um, and I, I think it must have been 2016 or 17, sure. mm -hmm. Pro probably around that time. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. And I only started streaming three years ago, though. Yeah. Um, 
because I was busy with university still. And then I, I moved into a new apartment and I got a new PC. And I'd been so involved with some people in the community that I felt like I I wanted to uh, start streaming myself. Um, mm -hmm. Back then, I, I wasn't with Jess yet. And uh, usually, my, my friends are not gamers or something. So this was just something that I was doing for myself, playing Gwent on the side. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> someone's been hijacking jess's account here in nice. the room next door it seems uh and uh, uh yeah i felt like why not stream and, and share my passion with other people and it seemed to be something they like the people enjoyed and yeah things started taking up from there nice mm -hmm. so you're doing it full time also right so when it comes to streaming are you also working oh i'm i'm working on the side i'm okay. uh, actually so i i finished studying last year mm -hmm. actually last year yeah last year and uh, now I'm doing my teacher's training because I studied English and history uh -huh. and be becoming a teacher. Nice. And uh, on the side, I'd already been working at um, uh, private schools here in, in Hanover. But in Germany, the state-run system is actually quite high prestige. It's like uh -huh. uh, unless you work at like these super high-level private schools, um, the state-run level is actually a bit better. And um, to, to work there, you have to go through these uh, this the state program that that trains you as a teacher. It's actually called teacher's training. Uh -huh. And that's what I'm doing right now. It's uh, quite strict. And uh, uh, sometimes it, uh, it is, is uh, quite a lot of mental stress. So it's nice to have streaming on the side to wind, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Wind down, mm -hmm. wind yeah. down and just yeah. relax a bit and have a good time with the community. Because, um, uh, yeah, that, that, that's a lot of work on the side. But um, uh, yeah, it's been going really well. Just a few days ago, I got my first evaluation. It's been very positive, so it looks like everything's going where it's supposed to. And uh, yeah, unwind was the unwind. word. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. And mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, I don't know. It's uh, it, I I would like to do more full time streaming if if I didn't have these uh -huh. um, responsibilities in in real life because uh, I really love just like spending time with the community on the game and everything. So yeah. Really That's cool. kind of the situation. Uh, which uh, classes would you would you teach in this case? Like, um... uh -huh. so I'm teaching at a German high school, which oh, high is school, actually okay. all classes from uh, fifth to thirteenth grade. Mm -hmm. um, so a wild mix of different. Uh, so the bigger kids, and... the bigger kids. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> t uh, basically ten to nineteen years. Nice, nice. Um, mm -hmm. You prefer younger kids to teach, or or, or the older older ones? I think it's like the the two extremes are actually mm -hmm. the most fun to teach. Like the fifth and sixth grade, they're still pretty pretty young and, and infantile. And like, <laughs> and like yeah, they 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 uh, are really easy to impress, and uh, you know it's like um, uh, they like to do all the different tasks you can think of as a teacher, like group projects and and and, and little role play uh, things, and where they where, uh, in in English, for example, where they where they uh, try to simulate uh, conversations and in, in history when they when one is the king and the other one is the the, the aristocrat or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. like they can kind of, um, like they, they love that kind of stuff uh, at that age. Yeah. And then later on, they start liking it again, but in between there's this phase where they hit puberty, where everything sucks and school is stupid. And that's probably the, <laughs> we, the always are, the, <laughs> we always do <laughs> that phase for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and that that's probably the the the, the grades that are the most stressful because um, I I don't know I know it sounds crazy but I actually don't enjoy torturing the kids I actually like having fun during the sessions mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it's it's easier to uh, excite the ones uh, in the early and the later grades at least for me but I yeah. think it might also be personal preference. Do they also know that you stream? Are they like aware of you being a full time streamer? It was actually a question that was in chat. That I saw. Uh, yeah. Um, so they don't, Good. and I need to keep it that way. <laughs> it's it's actually um, sometimes it's really hard. Let me say mm -hmm. this first of all. Sometimes it's really hard to hold this back because, especially in English uh, nowadays, they try to make the lessons so that it's uh, um, as close to the uh, students' real life experience as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so. They actually get the chance to talk about their hobbies, and, and some students like playing video games or like streaming. And since I don't want them to know that I'm a streamer, I always have to play oblivious. And I, <laughs> <laughs> they talk about, yeah, I like streaming. Do you know what that is, uh, uh, Mr. Not Crozier, but yeah, you know, Mr. Teacher? And I'm like, uh, no, tell me more. 
and and the reasons basically that as as a teacher it's it's kind of awkward um, if they know that I'm streaming because uh, first of all technically my streams are officially 18 plus on Twitch yeah. so I wouldn't be allowed to advertise them anyway and mm -hmm. I'd be kind of afraid if they find me it could get awkward with like what if they give me donations or yeah uh, that would like be weird. Right, and since I'm in the public eye, if I, I don't know, I, I rage at my opponent's play, and then some <laughs> student shows that to their mom and says, "Look, this is my teacher," and I'm like, I just, I don't know, I said I dropped the f bomb or something, got really angry, and this, I don't know, I feel like there's just the potential that it could lead to stress, and I know, uh, uh, Spessy told because you also you work as a teacher, yeah. right? He, he, like he did the same way that he never told anyone there, and so I try to keep it a secret. If they ever find me, it, it, whatever happens, happens, but uh, yeah. Right now they don't know. Well, yeah. Dreamer. Yeah. <laughs> um, how big of an influence I think for both of you is is The Witcher? Because uh, I know Miss Lady, you have a you have a dog named Siri. I have a dog named Gerald. Uh, how big of a of an influence are is The Witcher universe and like has been on you guys or fantasy overall? Because I think it's like a common theme. I mean, yeah, like you say, I got a dog named Siri. We've got displays of Gwent cards. We've got Gwent merch. We've got, <laughs> We've got the shoe, actually. I've been to the Berlin CD is it GOG or CDPR office. Mm -hmm. I was there. Both of us were actually there. Oh, yeah, you can so, see my signature there. That's yeah. nice. <laughs> Wait one second. It's there in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Might recognize that. Yeah, <laughs> with the little storm thing. Mirrored. Yeah. yeah, it's mirrored, but I think you can recognize. Yep. And he's got the books. We watched the series. We play Thronebreaker and all that. So, yeah. Yeah, I played the first and the second game. I even... actually have not. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we still have to educate you. I played Witcher 1 and 2 uh, way before uh, Witcher 3 came, came out. And uh, yeah, for me, it, it was always just. I guess one of my favorite fantasy franchises. I still have to finish some of the later books. I read up until book three. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I played the games, watching the show, of course. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess through Gwent and the whole streaming thing, it has become much more important for me, at least as well, because of just how much of a change it has caused uh, to, to my everyday life with the people I got to know through streaming and, and just. And um, I, I think that adds this extra layer of... Uh, of um, importance or of um, relevance to, yeah. to to me and uh, what I what I care about in my hobbies. Yeah, Actually, just... after skirmish, um, the way we got to know each other was I we, he played the DLC for Witcher Three, and I was like, "You got to play the first one because it's my favorite one." And he was like showing off that DLC with so, me. Yeah, I streamed it over Discord for her. Did like a one person stream Aww, <laughs> just for <cool>. her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, got angry. Yeah. <laughs> they got jealous. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite uh, character when it comes? I can like Witcher universe, all of them. Like if you if you choose, have to choose one, which is like your f number one favorite. You go first. I have to Triss. Think about it. Triss. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know what she would say. <laughs> Actually, I don't think she's gonna say Yen. It's another character I she likes better. I Yen, but yeah. I prefer Olgierd. Olgierd, nice. Yeah. Um, I think beyond that, I think I'm, it's maybe a bit boring, but besides like the uh, team Tris Yen thing, it's mm -hmm. like, it's probably Geralt himself who's mm -hmm. my favorite. Maybe, maybe it's just because you spend most of the time with him. Um, and then of the side characters, I I guess Vesemir was always, I always have a thing for like the mentor character. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, for me, it always has been Regis. Um, but that's probably because, like, I, I started with the books. Um, then I played the games. And then, like, Witcher 1, Witcher 2, Witcher 3. And then, and the, the, the you know, the first and the second expansion. And then um, then moved on. But, yeah, Vesemir is, a, is an interesting choice. Because, yeah, he is, he is like, the the old granddad. Um, and uh, he is, like, a father to, to Geralt. But uh, he's, like, a grandpa to, to Ciri. So it's, it's kind of really cool. Really cool dynamic there. Um, mm -hmm. Circling back to Gwent, uh, looking at how the game uh, is is currently in the meta, is there anything you would like to change or anything that you would like to? I know this is a big, big, loaded question. Is there anything <laughs> that you would like to be introduced to the game? 
<laughs> we laugh because you know what I want. Yeah, yeah, I also know what my guests want. Like I can hear them laughing over there in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want go first? Yeah, you can go first. I'm sure Brisa knows that I would like oh, girls in the background. Yeah. Hmm. I would like a dragon expansion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I saw your ideas. Yes, I even made new ideas for the existing dragon cards. So yeah, that's what I would like to see. Just just more dragons or more playable dragons, basically, because you like dragons. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Where did the love for uh, dragons come from? Since I, I always stopped it's here. It's always been there since I was like a little kid. Nice. Like. My mom would always want to buy me these fairy ornaments, but I was like, no, I want the dragons. <laughs> but she was like, no, dragons are evil. I was like, no. Mm. No, they're cool. So it's so born from dragons. rebellion against yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even, uh, if, even if you think about the Witcher universe, like they're like, you know, Witchers would not kill dragons because yeah, they're, they're they have feelings mm. and they're smart. Mm -hmm. They're, they're not just vicious monsters that destroy everything. So yeah. I, I didn't know that. And I brutally murdered the dragon Witcher too. I'm sorry. <laughs> And then after the fact that I was so sad. Ooh, yeah, I won't spoil uh, who that dragon also is because yeah, it's tight. To yeah, of course not. Of course not. Um, now, uh, for my uh, idea, how you would have to change the meta, I think the 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 problem is you guys can't please everyone. Uh, I have the feeling the community sometimes wants the polar opposite or like some louder parts of the community want the polar opposite of what I want. Because mm -hmm. I'm actually the type of player that really enjoys all this uh, more um, extravagant uh, type of play when it comes to things like Colgrim or Meditating Mages mm -hmm. or uh, the big alumni that, that boost off of Letitia repeatedly uh, increasing her uh, patience or um, Mill or Keltulis or Alchemist. I mean, Alchemist, I was just okay with. It was not like my favorite <laughs> thing, but it was okay. And see, the thing is, I I just appreciate the most in this game, and there's a lot of uh, variety and diversity when it comes to all the different ways you have to play the game. And uh -huh. for me, that is also based on the different approaches I have to take to beating my opponent's decks. And I feel like those decks that I named, not just playing them myself, but also playing against them, they actually force me to diverge from my game plan quite mm -hmm. substantially most of the time. I personally appreciate that, and I know that um, not everyone feels that way. Some people just want to play the deck the way they intended to build it in the deck builder, and I, I feel like, personally, I don't think there's an objective way to say what is better. It's just subjectively deciding what people enjoy more. So everyone's, of course, free to, to feel differently. Based on that, I would probably like... Um, some of the stuff to be more playable, um, mm -hmm. but I understand that not everyone feels that way. For example, uh, one of my, or one of our guests today, uh, Nergat, he's mm -hmm. been outspoken uh, against Defender as a mechanic. Mm -hmm. I don't want to misrepresent this uh, <laughs> concept. If I say anything that's not true, he has to come over and like correct me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, saying that um, the way the Defender works is just um, not really great for the game, and um, but. I, th I think it's always fair to make changes like that, even to mm -hmm. these uh, established mechanics, as long as you find a way that pleases the people that enjoy playing cards like that. Because, like for people like me, Defender allows me to play strategies that otherwise I couldn't. Mm -hmm. Right, as long as you, as when you change it, you have those people in mind as well that actually enjoy the play style that comes with it, and you find some compromise for those players to be happy as well as those that are frustrated with Defender. I think that's the the healthiest way to, to come to. Um, some kind of change uh, and, and to some kind of compromise. But it's not always easy, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also like that you mentioned the, the idea of enabling more cards or more archetypes mm -hmm. and kind of developing those because, yeah, I know I kind of know that we have a backlog in terms of cards which are kind of there on the back burner, which are not viable mm -hmm. and they kind of need, you know, they need to be brought, brought mm -hmm. back to life. And I also see, saw this like a sentiment that, you know, is throughout the whole community. It's not only something that you guys have mentioned here. Mm hmm. Nice. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, all these underplay cards. I think that's some something everyone appreciates when when uh, when these old cards um, they 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 get some uh, a new cool side ability or maybe even a, a rework depending on how what, what's necessary. Because I think especially to the card art, um, like people uh, build some kind of emotional connection to to the established cards and. Uh, 
it just gets some kind of character like identity to it and then um it's it's nice if like these old friends they get like a bit of a boost and they're playable again i think mm -hmm. it's something people really appreciate yeah yeah or even like you know taking on working cards which don't see much play and kind of making them mm -hmm. viable or making them fit to a to a certain archetype would, would make sense in this case um going back to you and streaming and your persona overall what's up with the potatoes white potatoes <laughs> the potatoes <laughs> well um yeah it's uh a question i get really often i, I don't know why i don't know why people <laughs> don't know obviously white potato uh, it's it's actually a lot of things at once uh you know, it, I think it just started off when I started streaming. I really like the voice line mashed potatoes with thick gravy. It's from the Albus Spearman. It's an all-time yeah. classic. And it was a meme way before I came into the community. I don't claim, like, responsibility for that at all. But I really like the meme. And I needed a follower voice line on my channel. Um, <laughs> so I just took that. And then I realized, because I had, like, uh, video and audio, like, uh, editing software, I could just, like... Uh, do a setting where every 20th time it doesn't say mashed potatoes with thick gravy, but it would say something like thick potatoes with mashed gravy, just to confuse people. I thought that was funny. <laughs> and then doing that, I realized, hmm, I could even mash this up with different card voice lines and just have like all different uh, combinations. In my first stream, I had like eight different follower voice lines based on this idea, and people really liked it. And and then at, at some point when someone followed, another potato voice line came out. I was like, yeah, my stream is the potato warrior. My chat is the potato warriors. And I don't know, it just kind of snowballed out of control. I got potato emotes and and I was all of a sudden the potato man. And it was just potato everywhere. So I always like to say I never chose the potato. The potato chose me. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a theme that that's stuck. Overall. Yeah. yeah. Um, are there any other like CCGs uh, that you guys both ever played or or is Gwen has been the one that you started off with? I mean, when I was younger, I played some Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh nice. cards at school with friends, but never online CCG besides yeah. Gwen. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I used to watch the Yu-Gi-Oh anime, I guess, mm -hmm. and then Pokemon played, played Pokemon cards and never competitively or anything uh -huh. like that. I, I wouldn't consider myself a card boy first and foremost. I'm just uh -huh. like a video game enthusiast. I like fantasy games. And from The Witcher, basically, yeah. The Witcher Gwent was maybe what paved the way. And then some friend hit me up and he likes CCGs. And he was like, hey, did you know, it's like this Gwent game. It's a standalone mm -hmm. now. And I was like, ah, do you think it's like worth it? And he was like, yeah, I think we should check it out. And I mean, <laughs> five years later. I'm here. Funnily <laughs> so, enough, I was yeah. like, I didn't even know about Gwent until it was advertised on the play PlayStation Store. Because uh -huh. I was playing The Witcher 3 and I was like, hmm, yeah, CDPR should make a standalone game for Gwent. That would be fun. And then I just saw it on, my brother actually showed it to me that it was on the PlayStation Store. And I was like, oh, okay, it's free. Maybe I should give it a go. Yeah, yeah it's funny that you mentioned it because um, when The Witcher 3 came out, like very, very, like, I think it was only after a couple months after it came out, I joined the company and I was uh, like sifting through all the emails that we would get from the community that was sent to like various uh, inboxes that we have within the company. And the, the, the thing which was in, in every email, like every second email was just like, Gwen, stand alone, Gwen, stand alone, Gwen, stand alone, Gwen, like you guys should do it. All, the, all these like pitches just to do it. Or people are even like saying that they will, they will make the game themselves if we let them use the IP and stuff like that. So um, <laughs> we got to a point where we're like, okay, this is, this is really something that is, has become a thing. And we, we never anticipated that to happen because as you probably, I don't know if you saw, there were a couple interviews with, with, the, with the creators for, the, for Gwen as it was in The Witcher 3. They were pretty much putting together a small uh, strike team just to deliver this uh, game within the game because they didn't want to have dice poker one, once again. So once mm. yeah, once they did it, um, they were very surprised that it became became a thing. And of course, through you know, we started off with taking the game one to one. Then we saw that yeah, there's a lot of problems with it being the way it was in The Witcher Three because you would be super super powerful and you know uh you would be sp playing spies for, for zero and drawing two cards and then and then just you know whoever accumulates and pretty much draws their whole deck and plays or the all the you know all the points out and it was it was it was crazy it was like a spam fiesta 
uh, but apparently a lot of people still miss that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, if you want, like read the Steam reviews and all that is weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, then we wanted to, you know, somehow uh, balance the game. But that was that was a whole different like story and very big difficulty to, to, to get the balance right because it was the first online multiplayer game that we're working on. I think the other like online game that we were working on before was Battle Arena, which is like a short uh, thing that we had like, as an MMO that you could play on your on your iOS or Android device. I think Vapion is from that actually. The yeah. Lord did bit. Yeah. Something something was taken from there for Gwent. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah, and then Nelf card was added later to the game, um, which which uh, I remember was 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 a fun time. Then we went through all the events that you know were happening in person and all the esports stuff. We went big in the beginning, but yeah, then we scaled down a little bit and and kind of we're doing everything now and due to pandemic reasons, of course, we're doing it online. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's, it's been it's been fun, and then I really like the direction in which we're going. Uh, but yeah, it's. I'm, I'm not saying that it was an easy ride, but it was it was bumpy, and and I mean, you've guys been been with the game for for a very long time. So, from your experience, how uh, how do you see the journey overall from from what we started to where we are here since uh, your veterans? <laughs> My question. Okay, I mean, I think um, right now. Uh, if if you just look at it as like a retrospective and knowing where it uh, has been going to at this point, you know, it, it, even though there was some bumpy uh, uh, moments here and there, there was some obstacles to be overcome. I think overall, um, it it has shown that with the dedication of the community and also um, with the uh, reworks and redesigns that you guys have been coming up over uh-huh. the years. Um, I, I think overall it's been a positive uh, development, and uh, with um, you know the the ideas that you've been trying out with like the recent um, expansion system, and and also um, just the way you've been trying to keep tournaments going uh, despite the situation in the world. I think things could have gone uh, much worse than they have. I think in fact you can see there's still a dedicated community uh, for a game that's quite old at this point as well, right? Um, yeah. I, th- I think overall, it's um, in my opinion something that uh, is 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 a very uh, exciting roller coaster ride, maybe <laughs> <laughs> ups and downs, uh, and uh, ultimately maybe from the perspective of a, of a, a content creator for it, that um, is it, it's it's of course something that's very dear to your heart. How the game's uh, doing, because that's also to some extent uh, gonna have an effect on how the streams are gonna going and how they're gonna feel, right? If people unhappy with the game you'll have lots of negative moods in in the chat and and things like that so um i think of course also um having had some uh rougher times in in, in the past also really helps you now to appreciate when things are going well and smoothly and uh updates come out that are well beloved where you can really um appreciate that where, where the game has gone is uh is is a uh is a good place overall in my opinion same same. <laughs> <laughs> Probably said it better than I, I would. Yeah, yeah, very, very well put. Um, yeah, incredible, incredible stuff. Um, when it comes to, 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 how do you see your future in Gwen? Like, is there anything that you see that you would like to hit as your kind of next goal? Of course, if you if you want to talk about it, like keep on streaming, maybe, I don't know, just thinking about streaming full time maybe thinking about you know moving into the future maybe you would like to do something different or like what's your what's your overall like when you think about goals of course i know you guys um you know talked about getting married and stuff like that so what apart from that like how do you see yourself and then like i don't know it's like it's like sounds like a you know typical interview question but what, how do you see yourself <laughs> in, in the next couple of years mm-hmm. should i go oh, yeah. yeah you can go first okay well, I would stick with Gwen, so as long as Gwen is still around. And um, yeah, my personal goal with Gwen is trying to get back into qualifiers and stuff like that, because I have okay. been slacking on that in the past two master seasons. But that's because, yeah, I'm spending time with someone else. Oh, it's my fault. Yeah, <laughs> takes up a lot of time. <laughs> so 
maybe I'll have more time now for the next season. And especially when I move here, then I won't have so as many distractions at my as I do at my place. I have more time to play Gwent. Okay. So, I mean, for me, I, I can assure you, um, no matter what the game really is, got it like the like how to put this i think i'm like this typical fanboy you have to like mm -hmm. really put a lot of effort into making me leave gwent as a streamer <laughs> or as a player uh so seeing myself in the future as long as you keep this game going somehow i'll, I'll probably be around to play um and for me um i still secretly hope that uh you can like uh keep the fire going until maybe one day there's like a new Witcher type of game that might have some <laughs> kind of Gwent in it, maybe one day, right? Far distant future, whatever. And if it could live that long, of course, that would be a huge uh, boost uh, to, to uh, like uh, really give it some more momentum again and, and then it can live for much longer. That's what I would hope. And then I would love to be around for many years to come. Uh -huh. uh, in what capacity, a full-time or not full-time or professional uh, tournament player? I don't know. I mean, I've been in, in pro rank ever since homecoming. I've never missed a single season and I've been placing in top 100 a few times. I was placing in qualifier range as well. Uh -huh. The best I was doing was uh, like the uh, third to last game or something like that in a in a qualifier for an open. It's It's not that I would consider myself on the same level as any of these pro players for me it's probably just being around for so many uh years uh at some point you might get lucky and, and make it far enough to to get to an open but i think if i really want to have a chance professionally i would have to really dedicate a lot of time and effort into practicing um and and um uh prepping for for the tournaments and the metas because i think i enjoy playing the the wacky decks too much that um <laughs> aren't always the best so it, it, i've also noticed trying that in the past sometimes it was something that wasn't that fulfilling. And I think I'd rather just have like fun with the community and, and uh, play at a semi-competitive level. Uh -huh. um, and full-time streaming is probably not that easy because I will be teaching um, yeah. mainly and I don't have enough time to stream eight hours a day on top of that because I also want to spend time with a lady uh, mm -hmm. and all that. But um, to the extent of what I've been doing right now, which is like four to five streams a week, three hours around that range, um, three hours streams each, that's at least what I want to keep going with. Yeah, but both of you, I see, have aspirations for, for, for a little bit of com competitive play, right? Yeah. yeah. And maybe go visit at Masters one day. Yeah, visit a Master if it's yeah, ever in person. That would be, that would yeah, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Like the, the thing that I really miss a lot is, is the fact of, you know, having people come over to the studio and having it, you know, in person. It's, it's, it's a much different vibe and it's much different, you know, um, approach the whole thing because you get to you know hang out, you get to meet the people, you get to talk to them in person. It's, it's totally different than just you know having them online. Same goes for any type of you know you know interview. It's much cooler to do it person in person than instead of you know doing it and also showing like emotions and stuff like that. Interacting person to person is much is much better. Nice. Mm -hmm. So Crozer, you're currently on Team R2s, all right? That is correct. Um, so if you ever wanted to go full pro, you would have a lot of like full pros in your team helping you to, to prepare and stuff like that. So that, that is already that is already something. But when it comes to Miss Lady J, you're in Bravado Gaming, right? I am, yeah. So that's that that is a team that does probably multiple different IPs that they that they stream, right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't have like a Gwent team. I would have to rely on him. To <laughs> <me>. <laughs> yeah, you guys would maybe. be a nice dynamic duo. <laughs> I'm just make a new team, Team Potato, <laughs> Team Corgi. <laughs> Corp potato. Yeah, yeah. Corp potato. Nice, nice. Mm. I know you guys have uh, also guests waiting for you, so I won't be keeping you probably uh, any longer. Uh, for those that would like to find you online mostly i think the people watching know where to find you but if you could like uh tell when you're streaming where do you stream where they can find you that's the time okay i'm lady j on twitch and i stream most days of the week at 2 p.m cet till 5 30 p.m cet 
I think Fridays are my day off. So every other day you can find me there. Can they find you on Twitter? You can find me on Twitter. Miss Lady J underscore Z A. Miss mm. oh, Lady okay. J was taken. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and for me, uh, I am Crozier on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Crozier. Uh, I'm streaming four to five times a week. Usually I'm taking off Thursdays and Tuesdays. But um, otherwise, this kind of varies a bit. You either have me go online at 2.30 or 5.30 p.m. CET. And then for three hours. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, it was amazing having both of you. Uh, awesome. We got uh, two, two, two in one uh, this time. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Thank you for taking the time. And yeah, have a wonderful uh, evening and the rest of uh, the weekend because the weekend is coming. Uh, yes. You yeah. Thank you so much for having us. It was an honor. Take care, guys. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. And yeah, we shall see you next week. And next week, we will actually have one of the developers here. Uh, Jean, most likely, will come. And uh, I will be uh, sending out a tweet uh, tagging him. And you can ask your questions there. So if you have any questions to our balance team, um, yeah, there will be a tweet coming soon. So ask away. And me and Jean will sit down next week and we'll go through those questions. And we'll also talk a little bit about him. Why, how, when he joined CDPR, why his past kind of get, you know, get to know the developer a little bit more. So we not only have community people here. Awesome. Cool. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Thank you everybody for watching and uh, we shall see you soon. Bye. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.